And now I'd like to introduce our speaker for today's Chamber U, Amy Matthews with the Nevada Association of Employers. Amy. Thank you, Danica. Good morning, everybody. I'm happy to be here to give some information to you on human resources for small business. Uh, we do find that this is a very underserved space. Uh, many small business owners are also their own HR departments, and HR can be a scary thing for people. So we'd like to take the fear out of this for you. So let's begin. Um, I'm a fan of memes, so here's one of my favorite ones. Uh, this is about the perception of human resources which sometimes, as I mentioned, can be a fearful situation. So in HR, in my previous uh, tenure as an HR director, I had some really fancy nicknames. I was the uh, hatchet lady, the ax lady, uh, the grim reaper, things like that. And truly, human resources is meant to support your business. It um, provides a line of communication from the company ownership to the people involved. So I always thought this was a, a little bit funny of the different perceptions that people see when it comes to human resources. So here's some of the things that we're going to uh, talk about today. We're going to review the basics of HR for business. We're going to review compliance. Now compliance is a long thing in and of itself, so we're just going to review what small business is actually responsible for from a legal standpoint. We're going to discuss culture personnel files, documentation, and the employee handbook. So here are all the rules and regulations that employers must adhere to, and I've also included the number of employees. So as you can see here, these are all the laws, uh, federal and state, that small businesses must adhere to. We have our Fair Labor Standards Act, and this predicates how people are paid, if they're hourly or salary and or entitled to receive overtime pay. We have the Equal Pay Act, the Immigration Reform and Control Act, which some of you may be more familiar with as the I-9 form. We have our Fair Credit Reporting Act, the Fair Pay Act, and Lilly Ledbetter from 2009. Um, this is about disparity in payment for, for males versus females. Polygraph test laws, and then we have OSHA, there's a notice of workers' rights and responsibilities in the state of Nevada that if you have just one employee, you're required to give this notice to your employees. The Nevada Domestic Violence Act, this was new in 2017. There are many rules that you must follow and time that you must give to your employees if they are a victim of domestic violence or if someone very close to them is a victim of domestic violence. And then we have for our military, uh, USERA, the Uniformed Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act. Uh, this is from 1994 and involves how to keep your people who may need to leave for military duty employed with you. Now we'll go into some uh, higher level of employees here. And just to be clear what this means, if you don't have this many employees when it comes to these certain regulations, what this means is if your employee reports you to one of the bureaus that handle these levels of violations, the bureau will not pursue it with you because you are under the required number of employees for them to take notice. However, if an employee does have a complaint, these issues are sometimes taken to civil court. So just because you have less than this number of employees and are not under federal auspices for this, it would behoove you to still try and follow these somewhat and treat your employees fairly. So we have the Age Discrimination in Employment Act, Americans with Disabilities Act, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This is uh, not discriminating for race, color, religion, ethnicity, or gender. Uh, Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, also known as GINA. We have the Pregnancy Discrimination Act and the Nevada Pregnant Worker Fairness Act. This was new in Nevada as of 2017. And as you can see, the majority of these, you're required to have 15 employees or more, except for the age discrimination where you have 20 in order for the federal or state bureaus to take interest in your situation. And employers with under 25 employees are required to have these things. You're required to pay unemployment insurance for your employees. You have to provide payroll, pay payroll taxes, and timekeeping records, all hours worked. 
You must provide workers' compensation insurance, even if you only have one person, you're required to provide that for them. And you're required to post labor law posters um, on the wall in your workplace. These need to be both federal and state and in an easily accessible area by everyone who works for you. All right, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about culture. This is one of the most important things a business can do. Culture is a combination of your company values, your brand, the core beliefs you have, your leadership, management, and it becomes your operating manual. Um, there's a trend these days about employees who become dissatisfied not necessarily with their job but with their boss. So they leave the boss or they leave the manager. They don't leave the company. They don't leave the work. They can do the work that they do anywhere because skills are transferable, but many employees are looking for a fit, something that feels right. And I cannot stress enough the importance of knowing what your culture is. So let's drill down into that just a little bit. All right, culture is the personality of the company, the shared values, practices, and beliefs of the company's employees. That's our textbook definition. So drilling down into that a little bit, as a business owner, and if you are an HR person for a business, you need to know why are you in business. The minute that you go into business as an owner and you have to hire an employee, it's vital to communicate the reasons for you being in business to the very first person you hire and everybody after that. Because this way, your mission, your statement, the reason for doing everything you do is clear and at the front of the line all the time. This can affect your profitability and your productivity and your work efficiency. So make sure that you know what this is and that it's very well communicated. Another rule of thumb that we recommend is to hire for fit and train for skill. So let's, let's talk about an engineer. An engineer can be an engineer anywhere they want to be. But if you have a culture that's somewhat motivated and uplifting and you know, a lot of uh, fun personalities going on, you may not want to hire the engineer who's very quiet and introverted and doesn't get along well with others. You can train people to do just about anything, but you can't train for fit. You can't train common sense, so that's very important to do. And remember, as I stated before, you set the tone as the owner or as the HR manager. Culture flows from the top down. Lead by example. Make sure that your, mis your mission and your message are communicated well so that everyone in your company is working towards the same thing all the time. All right, um, every business who has employees is required to keep a personnel file. So we have here a little sample of um, a basic personnel file. And these are the documents that should and must be in these files. So we recommend an employee info sheet. This has information such as your employee's name, contact information, uh, potential outside contact if there's an injury at work or if your employee doesn't come in one day, you need to call somebody. So not so much a next of kin, but just um, another method of reaching out to that person. This employee info sheet would also include the job title, the rate of pay, who the employee is reporting to, and their date of hire. We highly recommend keeping a signed employment application on file and or a resume. The reason to retain a signed application is that your application should be tailored to your business and there are certain things that may be required for your business. And if you have an employee who falsely represents themselves and you find out about it later, grounds for termination are easy when you have a signed misstatement from them. So that's something we definitely recommend as a layer of protection for you as a business owner. W-4 is the tax information. This is required. This tells you how much in taxes you're going to take out of your employee's payroll check. A signed handbook acknowledgement. Um, you should have an employee handbook, and we'll go over that in a little bit. And it's vital that you retain a record that your employee has read and understood the rules of your organization. Any training documentation should go in your file. And then we have the Notice of Worker Rights and Responsibilities. This is an OSHA requirement in the state of Nevada. You should have a job description so that your employee and you both know what they're doing and what is expected. 
Any disciplinary actions should be kept in the file. This can be as simple as an email that describes an incident that occurred or a formal written warning. Time off requests and payroll records also need to be kept in the personnel file. Now rule of thumb is that these following documents belong in a separate file due to privacy issues. So child support orders, wage garnishments, uh, they, those go in a different place. The I-9, that is a federal requirement that these be kept in a separate folder. You can keep them in a binder, but they do not belong with the other records of your employee. Any medical information, um, workers' compensation claims, injuries, documentation, and drug tests and background results belong in a separate file. So for some people you may have one file that's for payroll and general employment information and a second file for their benefit information should you offer that. I've provided this basic retention schedule uh, just as rule of thumb. This is some of the questions that we get asked a lot. So this gives you a good idea of how long you're supposed to keep all this fun stuff. Personnel files is three to seven years past termination date. Payroll and time records is time of employment plus five years. I-9 is kept for three years after hire or one year past termination date, whichever is later. Benefit records are to be kept for six years. Tax records are to be kept for four years after the date the tax was due or paid. OSHA and safety records must be kept for five years. However, any exposure records, and we're talking about if there was a, a chemical incident or a bloodborne pathogen incident, they want you to keep those for 30 years. Polygraph test records are kept for three years. Affirmative action plans and data for two years. If you do credit checks, uh, those credit reports must be kept for one year, and it's a good rule of thumb to shred them at disposal. Drug test records are kept for one year from the test date, but up to five years if your company is under the Department of Transportation rules. All right, so another funny meme. I told you I like memes. Um, in HR, if it wasn't documented, it didn't happen. I can't stress this enough. Um, document absolutely everything. And let's look at a couple things that we recommend that you document. Everything. Everything gets to be documented. The more information you have that you can provide when necessary, the better off you're going to be and the better protected you will be. So employee information, job offers, disciplinary and coaching actions, conversation records, wage changes, timesheets, position changes, grievances, time off requests. Basically anything and everything related to employment. And when it comes to documentation, you don't necessarily need to go crazy with it and you know, create all kinds of forms and templates. You know, it's 2018 and email and text are used quite often. So sometimes your documentation is just printing out the email, printing out a text, making sure that everything that you said, that your employee said, that your manager said is well documented in case you need it later. All right, the employee handbook. This is another thing that a business, no matter how small, must have. And our meme here says, not to brag, but my behavior at work resulted in several items being added to the employee manual. That's usually how it works. Employee manuals can be fairly dry, um, but it's the legal and instructional manual for your business. This becomes your go-to book for absolutely everything that you see. So that's why you want to have it. Um, situations at work with people can become somewhat emotional, and it's a great tool to have a handbook to go back to to see what your practice is. Many times we're asked about situations and they're not sure how to handle you know, the employee who came to work dressed inappropriately or is acting inappropriately. And the first question we ask is, what does your manual say? When you say it, you must also adhere to it. Um, things that go into a handbook are rules and regulations, the hours and days that your business operates, what is your holiday schedule, what's your paid time off schedule if you have one, what is your harassment policy. It's basically your nuts and bolts of navigating your company. The good news about the handbook is that it's fluid. Uh, things do change, just like the meme said, you know, my behavior resulted in a change. And that can happen. Sometimes incidents occur at work and we realize there wasn't anything for it. 
so we navigate that situation and then the manual can be updated to reflect those changes. However, you do have to notify your employees that you've made the change and have them acknowledge that the change has been received. So I have a couple of examples. Um, some handbooks are very legal. They're very dry. They don't reflect a lot about the culture. So here's an example here about that, just the regular handbook. This is our company. This is what we do. These are the rules that we follow. And then we have a fun sample. I found this online. This company is called Valve. And they have a really fun handbook. Next slide, please. So it can make it a little bit amusing and really give a good feel for your culture if you do something a little bit out of the box with your handbook. So in this example, you can see that the Valve Handbook for New Employees is called A Fearless Adventure in Knowing What to Do When No One's There Telling You What to Do. It's an interactive handbook. There are illustrations, and it's written more the way that someone would speak or the way that a book would be read to make it engaging and interesting, and this speaks well of culture. These handbooks are not difficult to do. They do take a little bit of time and energy, but once done can be a very fun and amazing way to indoctrinate your employees into your business. So these are all the things that go into a handbook. Uh, rules and regulations, appearance, attendance, holidays, your payroll info, things such as pay days, pay periods, overtime policies, and your work days, harassment policies, work rules and discipline. Safety is a big factor as well. Um, what are you, what's your break schedule? Drug and alcohol policies, employment classifications, benefits if you offer them or do not offer them, your office hours, uh, paid time off, and of course that ever important signed acknowledgement. Once the handbook has been read, there should be a page at the end that your employee will sign that tells you that they have now understood the rules and regulations behind your business. That's all. Just a quick overview of some of the things that we feel are important for small business. And if anyone has any questions, now would be a great time. Again, if you'd like to ask a question, feel free to do so in the chat box in the bottom left corner of your screen, or you can press star 7 on your phone to unmute your line. Um, I know that you mentioned that, that handbook. Is there any like online guide or any other um, uh, you know, employer handbook guides, that, uh, resources that people can check out? You know, there are a lot of resources for handbooks. If you go to Google and put in employee handbooks, so many things will pop up. You know, the example that I gave in there for the Valve company will come up. There's a lot of human resource websites that will do the same. My only caution with creating one from scratch is that if you don't know what your federal and state regulations are to include in the handbook, you can run into a situation where you've omitted something or you've included something that maybe isn't relevant. So while you can certainly create one by yourself, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Or if you do it, have somebody, you know, have an HR professional or an employment law attorney uh, review that for you. Um, we do have a question. So someone uh, is asking about, you know, younger generations, there's a, um, there's a stereotype kind of to that, that the younger generations like to job hop um, or there's no job loyalty. So what would you say to small businesses who are looking to incentivize um, younger generations to stay in position? From personal experience, the younger generation, and I think we're probably talking about millennials, <laughs> um, are all about culture. And they want to have a voice and they want to know how they're doing and they really want to be passionate and engaged in their positions. This is an old rule of thumb actually with HR. It applies to any age but specifically to the younger generations. They really just want a home and they want to be involved. So the best way to attract and retain younger employees is to give them that voice, let them know that they're heard, give them feedback on how they're doing, both good and bad, and involve them as often as you can when it's relevant in the decisions that they're making about their job and about the business. And of course, it's always good to have competitive levels of pay. You know, if you're paying 
um, you know, $3 an hour less than everybody else who does what you do, you're not going to have much success in getting them in the door in the first place if the money is what they're looking at as well as the culture fit. Awesome. Thank you so much. And um, I just want to remind everyone that if you think of a question later, feel free to contact, and I think your contact information is going to be up here. You can feel free to contact Amy directly if you have any questions, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I would be more than happy to answer any questions that anyone might have in this space. Perfect. Well, I want to thank you all so much for joining us today on this webinar of uh, Chamber University. Um, thank you so much, Amy and the Nevada uh, Association of Employers. Really appreciate you being here. Of course. Thank you for having us. We're honored to be a part of your Chamber University series. Uh, and again, um, uh, thank you so much for being here today. And I want to, we do these Chamber Universities every Friday morning at 10 a.m. So I invite you all to join us next week where we talk strategies to help you organize and implement your goals. So if you're interested in setting up more goals for your business and implementing them properly, come and join us next week. Um, thank you again, and uh, I look forward to, uh, to hearing next week's topic. Thank you.